know, well, to be more precise, Professor himself is to know. Now let me start by telling you one thing. My very educated mother just served as nine wives. What's that I hear you say? Has the professor finally gone mad? And what has this got to do with the solstice? Well, you're not wrong, wrong in one aspect. I have gone a little mad with all the homework we've been getting lately. However, my very educated mother just served as nine wives. Has a lot to do with our solar system. My very educated mother just served as nine wives as a mnemonic to remember the order of the planets in proximity to the sun. That being Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. So have you worked it all out yet? I'll let you ponder over that one for a while. Of course, to a lot of my fellow students, the solar system is pretty basic knowledge. So for my project, I've decided not only to look at some basic facts about the planets in our solar system, but also to explore the almost inconceivable distances between them. So the question I want to explore today is, if Mercury is the size of P, what size are the other planets in the solar system in relation to Mercury? And what are the relative distances between them if the Earth was just one meter from the Sun? Okay, so where do we start then? Let's start with the planet closest to the Sun. The planet closest to the Sun, at a mere 46 million kilometers, is of course Mercury. And after the crafty Roman messenger god, Mercury in this case is represented by a P, which is right here. But in reality, Mercury is pretty big. It's got a diameter of 4,878 kilometers and rotates on its axis once every 58.6 days. Mercury takes 87.6 days to orbit the Sun. That's about one quarter of the time that the Earth takes. And it has a temperature of minus 180 to 430 degrees Celsius. Next we have Venus. Now Venus, named after the Roman goddess of beauty, with an average distance of 108 million kilometers from the Sun. In relation to Mercury's P, Venus is represented by a one-inch diameter ball, just right here. Or 2.5 centimeters, metrically speaking. Venus, in reality, has a diameter of 12,100 kilometers, similar in size to the Earth, and rotates on its axis once every 243 days. Venus takes 225 days to orbit the Sun, and has a mean temperature of 482 degrees Celsius. Now, with all of that down, because I'll be testing on this later. Next, of course, is the blue planet, planet Earth, our home, the only planet known to harbor life. The Earth is 150 million kilometers from the Sun, or my astronomical unit. The Earth, like I said, is similar in size to Venus, and is also represented by a one inch ball for our comparison, as shown right here. The Earth has a diameter of 12,756 kilometers, and it rotates on its axis every 24 hours. Well, to be more precise, every 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4.1 seconds. And as we know, the Earth orbits the Sun once every year, or to be exact, once every 365.256 days. The mean temperature of the blue planet is a mere 15 degrees Celsius, and it has one moon. The fourth planet from the Sun, named after the Roman god of war, is 228 million kilometers from the Sun. Mars, with a diameter of 6,794 kilometers, is only about half the size of the Earth, which in this case would be represented by a half-inch model, just right there. Mars rotates on its axis every 24.6 hours, similar to that of our own planet. However, the period of revolution around the Sun is almost twice that of our blue planet, at 687 days. The mean temperature of the red planet is a cool minus 63 degrees Celsius. Mars has two satellites, or moons to you and me, being Demos and Phobos. The fifth planet from the Sun, the King of, God, the King of Gods and Men, is 779 million kilometers from the Sun. The Jovian giant, the largest planet in our solar system, with a diameter of 142,800 kilometers, almost 12 times that of our planet Earth. In our relative comparison, Jupiter is represented by a 10-inch ball, about the size of a basketball. Jupiter rotates on its axis every 9.93 hours, and, it rota and its rotation on the Sun takes a staggering 4,333 days. The temperature of the Jovian giant is a chilly minus 108 degrees Celsius, and it has at least 16 moons. The next planet in our journey to the edge of the solar system has an average distance of 1.43 billion kilometers from the Sun. Saturn, with a diameter of 120,000 kilometers, is represented by a minus ball, right here. Saturn rotates on its axis once every 10.56 days, 
and it takes an amazing 29.43 years to orbit the sun just once. Saturn has a mean temperature of minus 176 degrees Celsius and has 18 moons. The seventh planet, with an average distance of 2.88 billion kilometers from the sun, is Uranus, named after the god of primordial heavens and is also a giant in its own right. With a diameter of 51.488 kilometers, it is represented by a four inch ball in our simulation, just right there. Venus rotates on its axis once every 17.23 hours and takes a whopping 84 years to orbit the sun just once. Uranus has a mean temperature of minus 215 degrees Celsius. That is cold. And it has 21 satellite moons. Neptune is an inconceivable 4.28 billion kilometers from the sun. Named after the Roman sea god, like Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus, Neptune is one of the famous gas giants. Neptune, similar to the size of Uranus, <coughs> At 49,532 kilometers in diameter, it is also represented by a four inch pole, as shown here. However, Neptune rotates on its axis once every 16 hours and takes a leisurely 164 years to orbit the Sun. The temperature of Neptune is similar to Uranus, at minus 250 degrees Celsius, and has eight moons. Okay, so we finally come to the outermost planet in our solar system, Pluto. Hmm. Is it really a planet, I hear you say? Well, the International Astronomical Union doesn't seem to think so. On August 24, 2006, Pluto was demoted to that of a dwarf planet. However, for the sake of completion, we shall include its vital statistics. So, with an average distance of 5.91 billion kilometers from the Sun, Pluto, named after the Roman god of the underworld, has a diameter of 2,274 kilometers. Pluto is even smaller than Mercury. It's represented by an even smaller P in our model, just right there. Pluto rotates its axis every 6.4 days and orbits the Sun, wait for it, once every 248 years. So if you think about that, one school year is like 248 years. Not sure I can handle that. Well, you'd be pretty smart after a Plutonian week of school, wouldn't you? Pluto, uh, Pluto has a mean temperature of minus 223 to minus 133 degrees Celsius, and similar to the Earth, has just one moon. Anyway, there's a gaping omission here. I can almost hear you screaming, What about the sun, Professor? Well, I haven't forgot. Professor know it all never forgets. In fact, I left the sun as the finale of this section, as it's got some pretty impressive statistics. You could say it's a real superstar. <laughs> Moving on, the Sun has a diameter of 1.392 billion kilometers, and it's almost a perfect sphere. So how does this compare in size to the Earth? Well, have a look for yourself. This is the Sun, and this, believe it or not, is the Earth. No bigger than a typical black spot on the face of the Sun. You can see the Earth is completely dwarfed by the Sun. In fact, in terms of volume, you could fit over 1.3 million of these onto the Sun. Now that is impressive, even to Professor Nolan. So that's the first part of my overhead question. For the second part of our question, we need to move our lab to, shall we say, a more zoo place. So, see you in two shapes of last year. Welcome back, solar system fans. Now it's time to look at the distance of the planets from the sun and put these inconceivable distances into some sort of perspective. As you can see, we move the sun outdoors to get a little sun. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, it's a little inside joke. Anyway, moving swiftly along. The Earth's average distance from the Sun is 150 million kilometers, which is one astronomical unit. Now, supposing the Earth was only one meter from the Sun, just what are the relative distances of the other planets in the solar system? So, this is our Sun. And like I said, the average distance of the Earth from the Sun is one astronomical unit, 150 million kilometers. So, we replace the Earth just one meter from the sun. Right there. Next, Mercury's average distance is over 50 million kilometers, or 0.387 astronomical units from the sun. We will place Mercury just 39 centimeters from the sun. Just over here. Venus, with an average distance of 108 million kilometers, or 0.722 astronomical units from the sun, is 72 centimeters from our model sun. 
right there. A red planet with an average distance of 228 million kilometers or 1.52 astronomical units from the sun in our simulation is 1.52 meters away. Just over there. Whereas the first of our gas giants, Jupiter, with an average distance of 779 million kilometers or 5.20 astronomical units would be 5.2 meters away. Just right there. Saturn, 1.43 billion kilometers, which is 9.5 astronomical units, would be 9.5 meters away from our sun. I need the help of my lovely assistant. I need over double the distance of Saturn from the Sun, 2.88 billion kilometers and 19.2 astronomical units. Uranus, the god of the underworld, is 20 meters from the Sun in our model. Just right over there. Thank you, Karen. Now, Neptune, the last of our gas giants, had a whopping 4.5 billion kilometers from the Sun, or 30.1 astronomical unit, which is over three times of the distance from Earth to the Sun. Here is 30 meters from our Sun, way over there. Finally, the baby of the planets, Pluto. Ah, so cute. With an average distance of 5.91 billion kilometers, or 39.5 astronomical units, is 39.5 meters from the Sun, just as well as my tape measure only goes up to 40 meters. Let's zoom in a little bit further and find Karen and Pluto. Ah, Pluto's just right over there. So, that's our solar system in miniature. Hope you enjoyed the journey. Join Professor Know-It-All next time when we explore the question, is the answer to life, the universe, and everything really 42? That's a wrap. the soul